Another live broadcast of the Money Lab podcast from the Six Figure Academy. I am your host, Wei Hong from the Six Figure Academy. Now, this is the podcast where we give you tips, strategies, and interviews with other entrepreneurs on how to create that ultimate six figure entrepreneur lifestyle, lifestyle free of bad money stories, money anxiety, and stress. And in today's case, good nutrition so that you can monetize your dreams and execute your genius. Now, if you haven't already downloaded our free ebook from Money Anxiety to Six Figure Mastery, make sure you go to go.thesixfigureacademy.com and get it there. It's the perfect complement to all the things we discuss on this show, and quite frankly, it could change your life. Now, if you are joining us live today and you are not on YouTube Live, say hi. Hi. <laughs> um, make sure you get on Spreaker.com and download the Spreaker app on your mobile device and search for the hashtag, hashtag the money lab so that you can join us in the chat room and ask us questions, interact with us and our guest, or even request a specific topic to discuss that will help you in your quest for the ideal six figure lifestyle. Now, while you're there, subscribe so that you don't miss an episode and can catch us every week. For all of the ways to find us, go to the six figure academy.com forward slash radio for all the details. And if there's something that you love, about what you hear on this episode today, which I almost guarantee you will, and that you know could help someone you care about. Remember, sharing is caring and sharing, share the show with that person. So today on the show, we have Sarah Pruitt Soulful, pronounced Hi. soulful. I like the soulful, like there's an L in it instead of so full, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> Soulful, soulful. Soulful. It's such a cool thing. And then you incorporate it also into the name of your business, right? Mm -hmm. Well, just to give a little context for those of you who don't know who Sarah is, Sarah is this beautiful soul, is a non diet, uh, registered diet, non diet, non diet, yes. non diet, registered dietitian nutritionist that empowers people through insight and information to appreciate their body, move more, improve uh, life values. And lab values, <laughs> like your blood when they take it out at the doctor and they're checking for stuff. Oh, they yeah. lab values. Lab so they literally, so not money lab, because every time you say lab, I'm like, money lab? Oh, yeah. Improve your, but you could improve your money lab yes. values. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. Because if you improve your blood values, and, and then of course, if your life is better and your body's better, you're probably makes it's it easier all working better yeah yes. even including making money <laughs> and understand that food and nutrition is one of the most important aspects of your full life now now uh what what you do specialize in which is kind of cool is you specialize in like areas because a nutritionist can do a lot of different things right mm -hmm. but in your particular case i mean pediatric nutrition is a big passion of yours mm -hmm. making sure our future is healthy yes, yes. <laughs> uh weight and body issues mm -hmm. such as um both both sides right both obesity and like being too yeah. too thin like yeah. wafy thin yeah kind of like how it was when i high school yeah. <laughs> uh heart disease and how do you pronounce that Di dyslip dyslipidemia dyslipidemia so high cholesterol or high um ldls or mm -hmm. uh, yeah okay high cholesterol cholesterol or your cholesterol is not in, in good good uh, balance okay so so just so you know dyslipidemia has to do with your cholesterol. Yeah. There's your SAT word for the day, ladies LDL, and gentlemen. HDL, cholesterol, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Triglycerides. So, tri <laughs> just bad cholesterol, okay? Yeah. So um, also because of what you just went through yourself, pregnancy, postnatal and breastfeeding nutrition, vegan and vegetarian diets, which is like a mm -hmm. big thing. It's a growing market, mm -hmm. right? So a lot of very cool things. And you have your own office, mm -hmm. right, that you work in out of and Redondo Beach. So welcome to the show. Thank Sam. you for having me, Way. Yeah. If you can't. Oh, do I need to move this closer to you? I can't. Oh, yeah. Just right here. Yeah, there because I want to make sure that, you know, people can hear yes. you more than they can hear me. Mm -hmm. But I'm just I'm just constantly hugging my mic. <laughs> so if I, can. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> so how, tell me, how, how did you get into tell me your story about how you got into doing these things and how do you decided to 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 focus on those areas for nutrition? Because I know a lot of nutritionists out there that um that are almost afraid to niche, are almost afraid to say, mm -hmm. I focus on just this part of nutrition because they know so much and they can do so much and it's such a difficulty, kind of like how coaches kind of approach it. It's a challenging piece. Yeah. Yeah. How did you end up doing what um, you do? Well, it's mostly my personal interests and just what interests me and what I want to um, learn more about mm -hmm. and what I feel like I'm good at. Um, 
So yeah, I mean, all dietitians should be good at treating dyslipidemia and cardiac disease mm-hmm. because that's like the number one killer in the United States. So we when all it comes have to, to nutrition know, and health. Yeah, and like that. So yeah. we all have to know how to take care of our hearts with what we eat. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the pediatric part of it is, well, I am a mom. And I'm a non-diet dietitian. And so yeah, so let's talk about passion. what that is. Non-diet dietitian. Yeah. Like, okay. So in the past, dieting um, and being healthy has meant being at a lower weight. Mm-hmm. And so going on a calorie restricted diet <sighs> that's aimed at reducing your body weight for the sake of reducing your body weight. And that's it. Yes. At the at the <laughs> at the at the sacrifice of your your body's needs. Yeah. Okay. And at the sacrifice of pleasure, um, spontaneity, mm-hmm. um, living as a human in the world that has different experiences. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. So it didn't really address all of that. It's like you eat like this and this is how many calories you have a day. Plus, it can be a trigger for eating disorders and right. disordered eating. Dare we say Jenny Craig model? Yes, <laughs> exactly. And even Weight Watchers now, too. Trying oh, to wow. Trying to get kids in the mix to to come to their diet yeah, because kids obesity in. is a problem now too right it is yeah yeah i didn't I, I remember growing up um it was kind of sad i mean and i got a little flack for this is what are you doing looking at high school kids but i just i, mean, I used to be a personal trainer mm-hmm. and so i can't help but look at everything when i look at a human being it's not just like oh how do i look in the face i look at everything so i was uh i don't know what i was doing i was driving by and school was letting out and i saw these um young kids walking across the street and they had cellulite mm. in grade school mm-hmm. i don't know, re- i don't two-year-old has cellulite <laughs> what yeah How does that... well no that's the... not... <laughs> that's a little that's called baby fat <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> no but i'm talking about when you're supposed to be active and most active time one of some of the most active times in your life is just school mm-hmm. and you're you know you have pe and everything like that mm. should there be cellulite there mm. everybody's different but I don't, um, I don't remember seeing that growing up, though, seeing that and noticing that at all. Um, did girls wear short shorts when you were in yeah, high school? Yeah. 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 I grew up in the 80s. Okay. Yeah. So there are short shorts there. <laughs> well, Daisy Duke, I mean, Deuce of yeah. Hazard was the thing well, back then. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Daisy Duke. Yeah. She's awesome. Um, well, I think that our, the medical community has a way of pathologizing fat Mm -hmm. and making fat into this thing that causes disease. Mm -hmm. And so we have this fear of being fat now, fear of fatness. But the truth is that there's always been fat people. There have always been people and on Mm -hmm. both ends of the spectrum. And the point is to find a weight that's healthy for you. Mm -hmm. Now, it could have been the case that those kids that you saw carrying around extra weight that was unhealthy for them and their Mm -hmm. bodies um, they would have benefited from some compassionate care from a sure. provider who understands fat stigma right. and also helping them to focus on what's really important. It, um, because, well, ju- you know, looking at someone, right. you can't tell what they're eating. Maybe they were. I can. To- no, I'm kidding. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> you have I, can, Somehow, I, I can say, oh, what you're- can I have for breakfast? <laughs> Eggs. Yeah. And veg- no, yeah, I don't know. I did have eggs. <laughs> yeah, did, see, I, I had a hard boiled egg with uh, some malto meal. Malto meal. Yeah. You know what I've been liking a lot, actually. I, I love I love this show because I can talk about food because I I love food, mm-hmm. and uh, you wouldn't you know you can tell you probably think I don't eat enough, but anyway. Um, <laughs> um, like I said, I can't tell what you eat. I bet you can. But I if you really tell I one of the assumptions I do make is that people find pleasure in food. Oh Everyone yeah. Does. To some, yeah, yeah. If uh, if allowed to, in right? A health, if they have a healthy relationship right. with food, they are eating for pleasure. Right. So I mean, the, you know, it kind of leads into this. I think uh, was it um, uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. I think there was a discussion about the difference between certain types of people. Uh, some people eat to live, and so others live to eat. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you You're know, the live to eat person. Um, yeah, I didn't used to be, uh-huh. I used to be an eat to live, you know, mm-hmm. and as such, my, my physique actually reflected and it was not the ideal thing. I mean, I, I graduated high school, five foot 11, I was still growing and I probably wow. didn't grow fully to six feet because I was 125 pounds uh-huh. at five foot you 11. Skinny. Yeah, yeah. I was way You needed bad. to be eating way more calories. Right. So I, by the time I got to 
And it, I don't think my mom was trying to do it. It just mm -hmm. didn't know. And I just was so active, right? And I said, I don't want to eat. And just go. Mm -hmm. uh, when I got to college and I realized that, you know, I, and then I immediately went from 125 to like 180. <laughs> you did a 180. I did a 180. Yeah. Literally. Were you working out more too? Yeah. Building some yeah. muscle. Yeah. So for me, if I don't work out, I actually lose weight. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm that type of physique or, mm -hmm. or, or, or body chemistry or mm -hmm. whatnot. So metabolism, uh, metabolism yeah. yeah, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, that, that thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So so what? OK, so how about how about the whole skinny fat thing? You know, I know we'll eventually get to you. I know this is the money lab and we should talk about your money story at some point, sure. and how you ended up building your business for those who are passionate about nutrition like you are and want to develop their own business because that's that's kind of a, a challenging piece but we'll we'll get to that in a moment i just want to know about this whole skinny fat thing yeah <laughs> you know you know a lot of girls talk about that it's like oh, i got skinny fat and i was like okay what does that mean i had a client that talked about that what does skinny fat mean well okay so for so when i was a personal trainer i had um a friend she said i'm gonna come hire you to help me work out i said like, what do you need to work out because she was very svelte very you know well put together and stuff like that mm -hmm. she goes yeah, I might not look like it, but I have a lot of fat. I was like, what? She says, I have what you call skinny fat. So she was, her muscle tone was indeed low. She was really weak, mm. but it didn't look like it because mm -hmm. the fat made it look like she was okay. So she called it skinny fat. Mm. Mm. You know, and so apparently that is a term amongst okay. the thinner people who don't normally get, um, you know, saying, oh, they don't you know, get pigeonholed, pigeonholed as being, being fat. But when like you take the really fat, they don't feel healthy. They don't feel healthy. And then they know when they do a fat test mm -hmm. to see how much fat that it actually is cl close to. It's really high. Mm -hmm. And I and I and it was interesting to me because I said, I don't know what that term means, but come on in. And when we did the assessment, I was like, holy cow. Yeah. Where are you holding all of this? Yeah. And then when she started working out. It was it was kind of sad that there was a lot of weakness in the uh -huh. entire body. Uh -huh. So so she started eating more, more consistently. Well, more we, protein. Yeah, just cleaning up, cleaning up, cleaning up, cleaning up the diet and everything, and actually working out. Doing some strength training. Yeah. And yeah, high those, intensity intervals. Yeah. Yeah, to change so, your body composition. So what do you do if someone comes in and says, "I don't feel good," and they fall into that skinny fat category? I mean, how do you? And maybe they don't even recognize it and they don't think there's anything wrong. You mm -hmm. know? I mean, how do you reconcile with people who, how do we, how do you get people to understand the, that it's important to use a nutritionist if they are, I mean, what are the, some of the indicators that they should be looking for? Like they don't look, they don't, not just looking good because we yeah. live in a look good society, mm -hmm. but really it's calibrating not feeling good or mm -hmm. not, you know, being productive at work or mm -hmm. those types of things. I mean, what are some of the indicators of bad nutrition? Mm -hmm. Um, I get a lot of calls from people who have high cholesterol or hypertension or, um, uh, yeah, just want to work on their physique mm -hmm. or improve their sports performance. So mm -hmm. I do do some sports nutrition as well. Um, so your doctor would tell you, Hey, you know, your labs don't look that good. Or, um, in the case of a parent bringing a child in, they've mm -hmm. been diagnosed as having a certain percentage of BMI for their age, right. which would categorize them as obese or overweight. Right. And so their, um, doctor says, oh, you know, I think it would be really good for you to go talk to a dietitian and see what's happening. Mm -hmm. And then, um, in terms of how you work with someone who, um, who might not want to change or who doesn't quite know how they need to change. Mm -hmm. um, it's a lot of reflecting back to them, their values right. and their um, their desires to change, their needs to change. Right. Like, well, my doctor told me I needed to come in, so I guess that's why I'm here. Yeah, but yeah. you're here, so what how do we get, you, right. what do you wanna do with our time? Like, we can do whatever you want with your time. Right. How would this best be used for you? And, and that kind of, and that's kind of like the society, it's like a post-mortem effect, you know? It's like, okay, well, the doctor says I should go talk to a nutritionist. It's like, so why don't you? I mean, so since our audience are mostly, a lot of them are entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. right? Um, how important, you know, because of the demands of being an entrepreneur, as you know, mm -hmm. you know, being an entrepreneur yourself, how important is being, you know, paying some attention to what it is, your nutrition, what it is that you're putting in your body? I mean, how does that impact, you know, let's say entrepreneurs? Yeah, yeah. all of your health. Um, I mean, I'm no expert on entrepreneurial nutrition, but 
you know, all of those little things make a difference. Mm -hmm. Um, and I would say as a non-diet dietitian that your relationship with food Mm -hmm. is probably the most important thing when it comes to what you eat. Um, because if you're eating, well, I'm sure most of your listeners have a pretty good relationship with food. So I won't go. I I don't know. I mean, if they don't have a good relationship. So here's the thing. Here's the interesting thing is that, you know, people who deal with money anxiety and have a bad relationship with their money, that's not the only relationship that they have troubles with. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, we will find that people who have a bad relationship with money, that's just one cog of the wheel of other bad relationships Mm -hmm. in their life, including personal relationships. As what well about as their relationship with their body, relationship with their body, okay. relationship with their food, okay. relationship with everything. So if we break it down like that, chances are it's kind of like when we talk about people who are addicts, right? Mm-hmm. I had a client who specialized in um, sex addiction, mm-hmm. and she says, "Wait, the, the the interesting thing is, sex is usually just sex addiction is usually just one addiction that they have out of many. Mm-hmm. You know, so if you have a bad relationship with one thing, chances are that's reflected in all areas of your life." Mm-hmm. So I think one of the, what I love about what, what I, why I really want, one of the biggest things that, that I'm excited about having you here talk about this is that sometimes when we fix our relationship with our bodies and our mm-hmm. food, we end up fixing other relationships mm-hmm. in our life. I mean, you've probably seen it. When someone feels healthier, better, their relationship, their personal relationship, interpersonal improve. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Key example is with pediatric nutrition, Uh and you can even treat your own self as if there is a child inside of you that you're responsible for feeding. I'll start doing that because there are a lot of people out there (laughs) in the body positive uh, community who are like, you know, love your body; it's Uh so great, celebrate it. And there's a lot of people out there that are like, I don't know if I'm ever going to love my body. Mm. I don't love my body. Mm. But can you get to a point? My question to them is, can you get to a point where you're the loving caretaker of this body Mm -hmm. and maybe you don't love it, but you appreciate what it does for you and you can take care of it. Right. Um, And then hopefully that relationship grows into a love, but you're not putting any pressure on yourself or feeling bad. Like, well, if I can't love myself, then I, I guess I'm a failure at that too. Yeah. You know, but finding some way to be successful with that. And um, that's really important. Yeah, so I, I almost feel like, um, you know, by taking that step to, you know, be, being more aware of, you, of what you're putting into your body nutritional wise and the non-diet approach and and just being, you know, more aware of what's going on is a form of repairing that relationship, that self-love relationship. And, and, I, and I love their approach. It's so very holistic, yet it's grounded at the same time in you know, the the science behind it as well, Mm -hmm. that it's about the wholeness of of who you are, right? Mm -hmm. So let's, so, so let's start to bridge those gaps, because I think we started to touch on the fact that how important it is, your relationship with money, your relationship with self, your relationship with food, it's all related, because, you know, because it's about self worth, it's about your own value, right, how you perceive yourself, and what behaviors you're willing to do, in spite of them being hard right. and difficult, but to honor yourself. Yeah, because if you know that making more money will actually give you a better lifestyle, but if you hate yourself, you're not going to give yourself anything. You know, it's like, I'm going to give my gift to myself a gift of lifestyle, but I hate myself. You're not going to get anything. Yeah. So I don't deserve it. Yeah. I, I, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, so let, let's talk about. So, let's kind of let's let's bring let's bring it back to the beginning. But how? Tell us a little bit more about your money story. What you grew up with that is, you know, um, an integral part of you helping others. You know, developing that relationship. But let's talk about the money story first. Okay. Yeah, because I know you and I talked about it way back when. But yeah. Uh, I, and I'm I'm eager to hear how it shifted now. But let's talk about you know what you grew up with when it comes to money. Okay. Um, well, I guess my parents, um, you know, they give you messages. They gave me messages as I was mm-hmm. growing up. A big one that I heard was we can't afford it. Mm-hmm. Um, heard that one a lot. You know, we bought shoes maybe like once a year uh-huh. and they had to last. Um, that's my- still, that's still pretty frequent as opposed to like my, like my parents yeah. said, well, the soul's nothing, nothing's broken. There are no holes. Keep wearing it. So, but they hurt when you're like five ten and your shoe size is size six or something. Um, yeah. How'd you know? Were you there? 
Were you watching my feet? They're like, get over it. So what do you think? Like the old Chinese, they bind the feet. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So we don't have to buy bigger shoes for you. One (laughs) pair of shoes is all you need for the rest of your life. We'll just bind it. Yeah. You're supposed to have big shoes. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we can't afford it. Um, but that being said, my mom and dad always made sure that there were opportunities to play sports and go to school. Like education was really important to them. Food was really important to them. Mm -hmm. So we always had dinner at the dinner table every night, which was huge and huge and anchoring my world. And it's Mm -hmm. a value that I bring forward today with my family. Um, so there was always money for that, but it was always like, oh, we can't afford all these fun things or mm-hmm. we can't go on vacation. Um, then my dad went back to medical school later in life. and um, Which is cool. You said he went back uh, at the age of 40, right? Yeah, he was around 40. Nice. I was in kindergarten. So by the time fourth grade came around, um, we were off to residency. That was another four years. And then a fellowship. Uh, and then he finally kind of started making lots of money uh, when we were in high school, when I was mm-hmm. in high school. Mm-hmm. So I was able to get, you know, the clothes that I wanted to wear mm-hmm. and make more choices about like self-expression and reach those hierarchy of needs, like the needs right. are on the top of self-expression and, um, you know, all the fun so, stuff. So was that, was that, was that an interesting dichotomy? Like despite saying can't afford it, can't afford it yet, there was an abundance of everything that you needed for happiness and family and home life. Was that totally. did, was that ever weird for you? It's like, wait, but why do we keep saying we can't afford it? But then we have everything that we need here. Or do we? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know. And I think maybe I wonder if that is a symptom of like our consumeristic society. And maybe mm-hmm. I was seeing advertisements and seeing what my other friends had that I didn't have. Mm-hmm. Um, less of a shared reality with the folks around me. Mm-hmm. Um that was probably what more what was going on because I think if I hadn't been exposed to this is what you could have, mm-hmm. um, I would have been more comfortable just being like, yeah, this is what I have. You know? Right. Oh, and so so you choices. did find yourself kind of. I mean, because we live in a society that almost forces us to compare ourselves to others. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and that's that's like the kiss of death when it comes to prosperity and abundance. It's like. Yeah, you can always come at the grass is always greener or whatever. It's like, yeah. it's be. Oh, I hate that phrase, by the way. Yes. What's wrong with your grass? Why do you have to look yeah. at somebody else's grass? <laughs> I like brown grass anyway. I, I like crab grass. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I don't have to water it. I know. It's it's easy. It just keeps growing. Yeah. <laughs> Less maintenance. Look at them over there. They always have to like pay these people. to. <laughs> yes. Fertilize it. And... Do all that just so what? So I can look pretty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, so comparing yourself to other people and uh, you know, just negotiating all that stuff in middle school and high school and who yeah. am I and what are my friends doing and who's popular and why are they popular because right. they have the cool hairstyle or the coolest t-shirt or the coolest sneakers. Yeah. You know, my parents were always like, eh, you're beautiful just the way you are. Don't worry about Which is it. True. It is true. Right. It is. And that needs actually to be instilled in kids as early as possible, mm-hmm. regardless, you know. Yeah. And I love seeing, you know, like especially parents health who are healthy and in, in, in you know in the in the special needs community mm-hmm. instill that in their kids so early on. Mm-hmm. And just because they're special needs, you know, I almost feel like r- normal kids get a raw deal because they don't get that level of attention. Sometimes, mm-hmm. you know, it's like you are beautiful just the way you are. Yeah, everyone needs to hear that. No and, discrimination on that. Right. Point. Would you mm-hmm. say like, so, you know, kids who struggle with uh, obesity and everything like that, if the parents would just start to honor them and and cherish them and nurture and support them for what they are, they would actually proactively reduce that because, they're, yeah. you know, because yeah. they say a lot of times obesity comes from holding on to just like regrets, resentment, just yeah. anger or whatever mm-hmm. the case may be. Or wanting to keep people away from you, wanting yeah. more space. Yeah. And I think parents all want their kids to know that and they all unconditionally love their kids. Um, But if you're dealing with this um, like fat hatred yourself and not comfortable and trusting yourself around food, you're not going to be able to trust someone else around food. So a lot of times working with families, we work on the mother and father's own relationship with food so that oh. they can build a trusting relationship right so they can sh- with like the food by example they can teach their kids yes about what's going on okay that's yeah. that's cool so so did it so what happened when 
so after your dad was done and he started going out and making more money and everything like that, how did that then change the dynamic of the money store? Did it create more confusion now that I could keep up with the Joneses potentially, or was it just more just like, uh, I, you know, I, okay, cool. There's more money. You know, what? <laughs> yeah. Um, because that shifted yeah. because all of a sudden you don't, you don't hear the same language of can't afford it anymore, Yeah. which when you hear it at a young age, it's really in there. And when you yeah. hear it older, it's like, okay, but, yeah. um, if you didn't hear that anymore, what 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 was the dynamic like then? Um, yeah, I wouldn't say that uh, my parents went overboard and like spoiling us or anything. Mm -hmm. Like my dad's a little bit of a miser, so he uh, his first impulse was to like pay off all his student loans, mm -hmm. um, pay for the house. Mm -hmm. um, Why was that considered miserly as opposed to just being responsible? <laughs> <laughs> well, you attach well, miser. <laughs> well, he is responsible, but I would say from a past life, right. you know, he was uh, always the one who was going to try to save as much as he could. Okay. Um, and so, what's miserly? What does what does that mean? Because oh, it's because miserly. This is, is one of your big questions, isn't it? Well, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's, I, I, maybe I'm just curious. <laughs> I just I just get uh, I just miserly, get over the To me, miserly means that um, maybe you are unwilling to spend mm -hmm. money. Mm -hmm. Okay. What you like have. Ebenezer Scrooge yeah, type of I'm uh, remembering something he told you me. You just called your like, dad Ebenezer Scrooge. You know that, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but my mom was like the ghost of Christmas past. Christmas morning was just like <sighs> everywhere, everything right. we wanted. Yeah, it was like the one day that we could have. So she was into spending money. She oh, okay. that, but he would. Yeah. So I guess I had two sides of the coin because mm. I had the very generous very right. giving, uh, loving mother uh -huh. who's effusive with her uh, affection and her spending time and money on us. Right. And then the dad who was like, uh, I, don't I don't know, know. Like, let's do not that. do that. <laughs> we don't really need to go on vacation. Like, let's just go camping right. or whatever. And how does that show up for you today? I mean, you it, because it's it's so cool having that distinction because then you can probably catch yourself. One day I'm like mom, another day I'm like dad. Totally. And do you find yourself like flipping back and forth sometimes? Yeah. Yeah. And, and then also just appreciating the little things too. Mm -hmm. Appreciating the things that don't really cost any money, but what life is all about. Right. You know? And and do you think it's more like finding a blend of that to find so that it's your own unique money story that you can then uh, optimize and then pass on to your kids mm -hmm. so that it's not about the flip because it could be it could be exhausting one 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 part of the day you're like effusive and you're like very generous with your money next day next part of the day you're like no we gotta we gotta hold it rain back it in. rain it in right yeah. it's almost like a it's, it's like a, a extreme swinging almost yes. right did yeah. you ever find yourself going through that yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, and especially when it comes to business too, because it seems like sometimes things are really flowing and mm -hmm. there's a lot of people coming in mm -hmm. and a lot of energy coming in and then other times it just like stops, mm -hmm. you know, and it's kind of like, oh, what am I doing here? Like, where is my mindset mm -hmm. and where do I need to be in order to get that flow back? I love that you said that because what we found in our work is that that is a reflection of that flip-flop. Mm -hmm. that goes back and forth the unresolved pieces there's pieces that are resolved obviously where mm -hmm. it's like oh this is what we need um but finding that that bridging that gap between you know the extreme you know side of your dad the Evan, Evan, he's a yeah. i don't want to call him Evan, he's, yeah. he's 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 crotchety yeah. uh like a, like a my the miserly right and versus yeah. the super generous mm -hmm. the extreme sides of it um and then it shows up in your business like some moments there'll be an abundance of people coming in and the next thing there's like nobody coming in. It's like, what's happening? Yeah. Right. And do you think, do you feel that there's any correlation between what goes on inside energetically mm -hmm. and then what ends up showing up uh, in yeah. your business? I think for me, for me, it's a little bit energetically what's happening to mm -hmm. me, but I try not to give myself too much power over mm -hmm. things because I like to live in a state of grace. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Grace and, and ease. That's yeah, what we talk about all the time. Ease. And part of that is negotiating how to raise my two kids because mm. I have an eight month old and a three year old. That's right. You're a new mama. Well, yes. God, I could have sworn you were still just pregnant the other day, but it's been uh -huh. eight months now. Oh my goodness. July of last year. Yeah. Holy cow. I yeah, thought we so, known you for a year. 
Yeah. Oh my god. No, over a year. Over yeah. a year. Mm -hmm. Wow, look at that. Dang. Yeah, because I started my business in April. I've been in business a year. Yay! Yay. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, you're you, this is your first year of business. Yeah. Oh, I didn't realize. I mean, you because because it's not like because most people their first year are like they're they're constantly in that state of oh, but you're you you it's all about grace for me. That yeah. was my intentions last year. Last year, 2017 was uh -huh. all about flowing gracefully mm -hmm. through the year because right. I knew I was going to open my business, right. have a son, um, be, you know, all doing all the things with him that I needed to do. And right. I think that it's important to spend time with an infant. And despite all <laughs> being super mom, <laughs> such a time with this. Well, whatever. I'm doing the best I can. <laughs> I'm doing the best I can to honor him and honor me and honor my family. Uh -huh. um, well, no complaints from hubby, right? No, he's he's super supportive. That's good. Yeah. See, and, and so I th that means you're probably doing something right, and your business yeah. is also thriving, and you're changing lives, and you're helping people. Yeah. Right. Little by little. So yeah. let's let's talk about that because I think one of the biggest challenges with a lot of people is just starting, and I love the fact that this is. We're, we're we're having this conversation in the in the month the month the anniversary of your business because I think a lot of people even in your space and in any other industry the the fear of starting a business is oh my god that first year but you navigated that first year not only just focusing on the business but you also became like became a mom again and everything like that and despite that your business is still growing and thriving yeah. you got a, you moved to a newer office mm -hmm. um, you know you're your husband's not like, oh my God, there's so much stress and everything has been graceful. Yes. How, what, what can we share from your end that is able to provide? Because I know now, even despite having opened other businesses, like this last year, we opened up another one, right? I told yes. you. Yes. And, and my gosh, there was one moment where I sat there and said, oh my God, I forgot what it's like to, be, to, to have a startup again. And it was just, I can't imagine if I was like giving birth at the same time or being pregnant and then doing this. And it's like, <laughs> maybe I'm just living in uh, blissful ignorance or something. <laughs> I just like, but I, you know, I, I went into it sort of expecting a loss on the money side. Mm -hmm. And I, to me, that felt okay. Okay. That felt fine to me right. because I was going to be getting so much more out of it than just the money that I would be making. But you didn't just make a loss, did you? I did make a loss. That's that's, that's an interesting phrase, well, make a loss. I don't know. If I count January, February, March of this year as uh -huh. like a full year, I would have been profitable, slightly So profitable. you are profitable actually. So I am profitable. Because you start in April, and we're talking about the full okay. year. Yeah, but I was thinking like 2017 on my taxes, I'll show right. a loss. Right, but if we count but the full 12 months, yes. You actually profited. I did, yeah. That's a that that's a huge that's I... a big deal. Okay. Congratulations. Should we Own celebrate that. that. Yeah, celebrate. Yay. Yeah. Yeah, high five. High five. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Because, I guess I'm okay. Yeah, because he, you know, here's the part, here's the interesting thing is that you know, that fear of the statistic that most businesses when they first start out, it's like it goes to a loss the first year, you yeah. know? And you know, if the, the more businesses you start, the real the more you realize, or the more times you do it, like I have, I'm kind of a serial entrepreneur. Okay. You realize that it doesn't have to be that way. Because I know the six figure academy with is I don't know how which one this number six, seven, eighth of my businesses that I started. Okay. Uh first year, totally profitable. Okay. You know, um, and and there was not even a question. I didn't want to play into the statistics. So it's kind of interesting. It's really cool. I love I, I love that we can see that today because you can realize in this moment that you don't have to play into any statistic. Mm -hmm. And you can do it with grace and ease mm -hmm. and still profit. Mm -hmm. Even if the profit is still a dollar, it still beats every statistic out there for entrepreneurs in their first year. Heck, the first five years or three years, two, three years. How many years? Can I think yeah, you can write off. I think four years, I think. Okay. But don't. Don't quote me on that. I'm not a CPA. For those you of you here, you don't want to show a loss for four years, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> on paper. But on here, paper, you can. Yeah, yeah, you can run the numbers a certain way. Right, because they. I mean, the, the tax laws are written by people who want to take advantage of it anyway. Yeah. So we might as well check out the loopholes. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah. I guess I'll be counting off my Ferrari next year. Yep. You know, yeah. Business expense. I saw the L, the new LC500 Lexus on the road today. And that's one of the, I have my eye is on that, that one. Is that your next one? Yeah, that's because they have it in hybrid mode too. Oh, very cool. Which is really cool. Yeah, it's either that or mm. Tesla, but my sister already has a couple of Teslas. And I'm just like, you're not that into it? 
I, I am, but it's kind of like one of those things where I, it's in the family already. I want to get something different. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Because I was like, everybody I've talked to has has a Tesla. Is just like, oh my gosh, it's the most amazing. It, car. it is pretty I love amazing, it. And, you know. And and having yeah. had you know um, the founder of Tesla Motors be a client of mine, I was like, you know, it's I I see a lot, you know. Yeah. I see a lot of it, you know. But um, yeah. God, he's such a cool person to be around, and at the same time, very intimidating. Uh huh. <laughs> Uh, I, I can't even imagine. I can. <laughs> You've been there. You don't have to. I've been there. You know, it's yeah. just like it's 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 so interesting to see what someone at that level, what they're willing to spend their time on and what they're not. It's in fact, the time component is such a huge piece in terms of more so than money. I'm so curious about that. You know, he has it makes sense to me. two housekeepers, from what I recall, two housekeepers at all times, four nannies. You know, they had How five kids. kids? Oh, they had five, five kids. kids so, okay. well, yeah. you know, um, kids are very time consuming. Yeah. And and just like everything <laughs> just, in the house. Really? Yeah. It's like, I don't know. It's fine. Not fun. All the <laughs> it's, time. It's, it's fun sometimes. It's fun. Sometimes, just sometimes. Most of the time, <laughs> Most it's of pretty time. fun. <laughs> sometimes it's not fun. No, it's not. Yeah. It, it it no. How many kids do you have? One. One. Okay. Yeah, she's in college. Okay. <laughs> so that's nice. <laughs> she's flying away. Yay! Yay! Just be careful. Just be be a good contribu contribution to this world. That's all I care about. Yeah. <laughs> um and uh, just yeah. Yeah. Values. But the not. the time. That the time he pieces. Spends and what what he's willing to do and what he's not willing to do is a key piece of. Yeah, his I mean success. his success. It's it's really uh, it comes around because there people think money is finite, and that's a big trap because it's not. There's an abundance. Let's look at cryptocurrency, and there's an abundance of as long as there's electricity and electronics out there. There's an abundance of money because everything's all electronic now, right? Yeah. So where is it that we look at? Where is it that we help manage the most is time. There's only 24 hours in a day. Yeah. And no matter how we slice and dice it, it's still going to be 24 hours in a day. Mm -hmm. And so the most precious commodity uh, in our lifetime is probably going to be one of those things is going to be time. Mm -hmm. And so this leads into my next question in terms of, you know, what do we what do we say to people who who because they recognize, well, there's a time thing and they don't allocate time for self care. They don't allocate time for maybe even say, well, it's too much work to understand nutrition or it's too much work to kind of like to even go to a nutritionist or to, to even get a plan together. I don't have time for that. Have you heard? I'm sure you've heard of that. Yeah. So what do you say to people who have that dialogue? I don't have time. Running? I don't have money. I'd love to go to the gym, but I just don't have time and it's too expensive. And it's like, yeah, but you're talking about it. Obviously, it's important to you. Right. Your physical and well-being is important to you. Yeah. And what, at what detriment, you know, to not go to the gym, to yeah. not pay attention to put good food in your body. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, what 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 then would that look like? I mean, give me like a, a a a scenario. Let's say someone who is, you know, in your in your particular case, let's say someone same same circumstance. Right. Starting a business new. Uh, Second time around, new mom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Second time mom. Second yeah. time around, mom. Breastfeeding right? takes a All lot those... of energy out of you. Right. Yeah. What What do you think are the consequences of not paying attention to your nutrition, or not paying attention to your self care needs? Mm. What would you say? Uh, Paint man. something out. Well, you know, <laughs> I. You, you, I mean, I'm sure you've seen them. <laughs> yeah, I do. I I like to give my clients the good lines. And so I like for them to tell me to what detriment would you, you know, what, what are you experiencing now that you don't want to experience? Mm -hmm. And they might say, well, I'm really tired and I just don't feel good in my body. Mm -hmm. Like I feel, I don't know. They might say they feel fat, which isn't really an emotion, mm -hmm. but uh, they feel. What are you expressing right now? Like, fat? <laughs> yeah. What emotion fatness. is that? Just fatness. <laughs> Get over it. Want to fight yeah, about it? <laughs> yeah. Or feel sluggish or tired or. I think that's such like, a cool thing. It's yeah. just that I feel fat. It's like, that's not an emotion. What are you talking it's about? Not. <laughs> but really, people say it all the really time. Feel it. Yes. Yes. Um, I just yeah. heard it actually a few days ago. Uh huh. Wow. Well, and you can't be there for your kids and your uh, relationships if you're not at your best. Right. Or 
I would and say what does that when look you like are then? at your best, when you're getting enough rest, mm -hmm. whatever that looks like for you, because mm -hmm. different people need different amounts. Yeah. When you're feeding yourself well, mm -hmm. however that's defined for you, mm -hmm. because there's so many different ways to have a healthy diet. You can be vegan, vegetarian, omnivore. Oh, you and I need to talk. Uh, Our technology can help people determine physically uh -huh. what their natural propensities in terms of the balance and the, the portions of protein and veggies. And, uh -huh fish and all those different things. Oh, okay. Some people are made for it, some people aren't, and then yeah. we do, we can show them. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. I know, that's right. Oh, that's right. We, okay. we were supposed to Let's talk. That's supposed to, yeah. <laughs> that's supposed to show you. Yeah. Um, but so let's, but let's go more. eating healthy, right. resting enough for you, um, fit, uh, healthy or uh, joyful movement. Mm -hmm. But do you find that when you paint the picture of where you want to be, more than actually helping them articulate why it's really a problem not to have that mm -hmm. do you think that's a little bit um do you think that's a more challenging place i think because i feel like you don't like going there either mm -hmm. let's talk about how, how how much and how much pain you are right now yeah. Yeah. so we can get you out of it but the reality is a, a lot of people in our culture they won't make any changes unless they recognize that there's a true problem yeah. happening or they hit rock bottom right like i feel fat you're right it's not an emotion and it's not compelling enough for them to do anything about it. they'll just say it all day yeah but how is that really impacting their life? So going back to what you said, does that affect their performance at work, uh, their ability to take care of their kids, mm -hmm. the ability to support their relationship in their lives? Yeah. How does that then, over a prolonged period of time, what would that? How would that impact their life? Mm. What would you have you seen any of that? I'm sure you've seen it. Yeah. Well, I mean, it reflects in your lab values. Okay. So your cholesterol <laughs> is higher. You might have hypertension. Is that compelling enough? But to well, if you tell someone, you know, you could have to go on all these meds and take pills every day, a lot of people of are life. like, no, I do not want to take any pharmaceutical anything. Because what could happen if you end up having to take all these pharmaceuticals? There's lots of side effects to those. Um, like the what, like the commercials that go, that are, side effects can include death. death. <laughs> yeah. It's like, wh why would I take something where a side effect yeah. would be death? No, really? It's like, what? And the <laughs> And there are tons of nutritional supplements out there that actually don't have side effects and are uh -huh. great for you. So yeah. So it, you, you know, I, I guess I guess the thing but, is, but I, I I hear what you're saying you're about right. um, painting a picture of one side and then painting this other glorious picture on the other side. Um, I don't tend to really do that with my clients, but I do sit with them in their ambivalence mm -hmm. because everyone is ambivalent about a major decision in their life. Mm -hmm. especially about their money too. Right, right. There's this, oh yes, I really am really willing to work for this future that I see for myself. Right. But at the same time, right. it's, it's so easy to stay here. And I know this and I'm comfortable with it. And so um, I use motivational interviewing. So we reflect the change. Right. It reflects the positive change, but we also reflect the ambivalence. So if I was reflecting the ambivalence for someone, I would say, well, it's... Um, really hard for you to envision mm -hmm. making a change to make your world better right you still have this strong desire to take the next step yeah then that gets them talking about the next step mm -hmm. whereas if i was reflecting the negative aspect that would help them reflect on the negative aspect mm -hmm. and i always want my clients to be thinking about the positive change what they're going to do the, because the science is when you talk about what you're going to do and you hear yourself say it it mm -hmm. reinforces that belief and then you actually might go ahead and take action on it yeah so but it, would you say ambivalence is what gets them into the door though for your yeah. for your business possibly yeah or just experiencing because, like worry about their kids like oh, I don't so that's not getting enough yeah so that's that that might be a little bit more than ambivalence right because ambivalence is kind of it's like it's kind Going of like both ways. Yeah, they'll, they'll be sitting in front of they're sitting in the parking lot in front of your offices. Well, you know, I know I need to go in there, but there's a part of me. So if you haven't spoken to them, does there's probably something else much deeper that actually pokes them in the buds to get yeah. in there. And that's what I'm betting on. I'm betting yeah. on that the positive change and wanting to be different is stronger mm. than the not doing something. I right. mean, they're the ones that picked up the phone and called me. Right. They're so there's the some that pain that compelled them to pick yeah. up the, because you know unfortunately we live in a society where where it's not the 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 pleasure endpoint that really drives someone to pick up the phone and do something about mm -hmm. it 
right? Yeah. And it's, it's because co- sometimes if you haven't been there, you don't really know what it looks like. Yeah. But you have some sense of what it could be. Right. So what compels them to actually take action, the first step anyway, mm-hmm. to get them in the door is from what I hear, it probably isn't the ambivalence piece, but rather there's some pain point. Yeah. Right. And I think um, I think I think the part what I was talking about is that how how do you articulate to them so that you can help them like feel mm-hmm. comfortable around you that you understand the pain that they're in yeah I almost that almost pain. better than than they they know yes yeah you know so but, you're sitting at the dinner table with mm-hmm. your son and he's refusing to eat his food it's causing all this disconnection right. between you and him and then you want to feel like you're not nagging him every day but you're really feeding him in a way that nourishes him right because if you're not then what happens yeah and then you're worried about his growth and his development you're and worried do, you, about... do we see that i mean parents because kids respond so quickly i mean if you're not feeding them well do they is it is it through their behavior or is it through like them getting issues like through the parents feeding style hmm yeah, and their okay. attitudes around food and mm-hmm. uh, the choices that they make for their kids in terms of like setting up a regular schedule. Mm, okay, so <clears throat> so if 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 an, if someone who was having challenges around money and they and they and like we were saying that this, the relationship with money is bad and they say you know what but I you know I'll I'll just go and I'll binge eat or I'll go out and party I'll go I'll do these different things yeah. cool. and then yeah and then I would say something like you know you need to if, if, if tackling the money piece head on is challenging, let's fix some other relationship in your life, mm. such as your food, your nutrition, your lifestyle. We fix that, which, which we've done before. We, we focus on uh, uh, repairing their lifestyle mm-hmm. and actually repair their relationship with money. So you put the money on the back burner. Right. If, if you someone is so, stuff, yeah, they're too stuck. Yeah. They're too stuck. And then we'll say, okay, well, let's look, let's look at where else you're having these challenges. Mm-hmm. And when wow, we end up, these people are traumatized. Yeah, possibly. I mean, it's yeah, that's hard. If you're when you're traumatized, mm-hmm. it's like you can't even look over there, but you know you need to heal, but you just can't even go there. Right. Wow. So we empower them with something a little bit easier. <laughs> yes. Like you have to eat anyway. So let's look at what you're eating. Let's work on that. Yeah. You know, let's support you in your healing in this other way. Right. So I had a had a client who was um, struggling with the money piece and on the verge of getting a divorce, eating like crap. He used to be an athlete, but now he's like he was well then he was super fat and then his kids barely knew him mm-hmm. and basically focused on that frustrated the heck out of him he says i came to you for money why are you working me with on me on this stuff mm-hmm. it's like everything's related he goes oh, okay whatever and it did when he started to repair everything on everything else mm-hmm. he started seeing money in a different way mm-hmm. you know and it had to do with you know him beating himself up on a lot of different things a lot mm-hmm. of different levels he was mm-hmm. creating circumstances that would justify the the self-deprecation that was going on internally wow yeah and it's such a cool thing and i'm, I'm pretty sure as as you continue to do, um, grow your business, you're going to see more and more of that mm-hmm. that will show up because right. food is such an easy place for people to go to either take care of themselves or punish themselves. And that's mm-hmm. such a that's such a such a necessary space, especially with these kids. I mean, I have clients that go to, uh, that go to high school and they complain that there's no good food options there. You know, so what are you going to do about that? <laughs> yeah. Misnutrition. Do you have any ideas? Well, well I, mean, I would ask the, I would ask the teenagers. Because part of my style is to come along beside someone and partner with them. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, being a resource mm-hmm. um, and empowering them to make mm-hmm. better choices. So I'd say, well, so walk me through your day. Like um, the options at school aren't very good. You don't like them. Yeah, he goes, I'm so, tired of eating Pop-Tarts. You're tired of eating Pop-Tarts. You'd like to eat something besides Pop-Tarts. Teachers, I mean, the schools are offering Pop-Tarts still. Can you believe it? Yeah. It's crazy. Or they'll do um, bagels and cream cheese uh-huh. with hot Cheetos on the side. And then uh, my <laughs> my brother-in-law teaches at Lawndale High School, and he says the kids just take the hot Cheetos and eat the cream cheese. Just dip them in the cream cheese. But the point is that when you're a teenager, you should be taking some um, action in your own health and feeding yourself. Yeah, That's a normal progression that parents can work on. And it's on. such an so, important developmental time in their life. Absolutely. 
So taking a little bit of responsibility during the day, I mean, without putting words in their mouth, hopefully they would come to this conclusion themselves, but they might think, wow, maybe I should bring lunch or bring a snack or something. Yeah. At least one day a week or whatever right. there is that is that their goal is because I um, think that's an important piece calibrating yeah. what their goal is and showing them why having good nutrition will contribute to them being able to achieve their goal, mm -hmm. whether it be getting better grades, performing better in sports or all those different things. Yeah, Or they might just be really interested in social change and wanting to, yeah. change, you know, environmental action. show up and right? not stink. Yeah, because you eat bad food, you have stinky sweat. <laughs> oh, that part of social change. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, or they might that's be all like, that's important. You know stink what? Dang McDonald's for coming into my community and taking all this money and serving us food that's making us sick. I want to be part of a healthy change in my mm -hmm. community. I want to have a healthy corner store, or whatever. I'm going to feed my own self. I'm not going to rely on this huge corporation right. to feed me. So, what is it? What is your bigger vision then? You know, I mean, it sounds like you have more than just this having one little practice here. And what is your big instrument of change? What's your big vision of what change would look like when it comes to? nutrition i am gracefully flowing forward with that one <laughs> but you gotta have some kind of any i mean just I, to, if you give yourself give yourself a little bit of freedom to just kind of like just dream, dream a little, little. Bit. yeah okay let's yeah. dream yeah um i think the south bay area is severely lacking in access to just regular plain old affordable healthy food at a good price. Right. Um, and, and there's so no cooperatives here. So I would love to see a food co-op in the South Bay. Uh-huh. Um, I'd love people to would see be into more that. community gardens. Yes, I yeah. think so. Even if it was like a cooperative that you owned, but you didn't have to work there or participate as a, a member owner. Um, yeah, so I would love to see that. I'd love to see more local permaculture gardens right. and because um, you know one of the things i liked about say like sprouts for example mm -hmm. they they go local they source local and they have sections and they say local mm -hmm. local and now obviously it's a business everything's and, in california yeah, is local though. yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah local in minnesota means something local and i mean local means something in california too right but um yeah I think but it was, yeah California. exactly it was interesting because i went to farmer's market right over here right and yeah. um it was interesting. I was like, "Oh, farmers market." These are, and then these people were from like Mendocino County or Mendocino County. Or, they're like really far, really far, like away. Sacramento like and everything an like that. Drive. I was like, "What? How did you, you guys get here?" I know. It's like well, you guys crazy. came all the way down here just for this. This is a small farmers market. What yeah. are you doing here? Or if they didn't, then it was already here. And mm -hmm. how long has it been here? And then you guys decide to come out to farmers market and sell us like the leftovers. Yeah. You know. know. So yeah. So I think. Um, Okay, I think I think there's some there's some cool things that can happen and just the South Bay or just just like in general. I mean, the, the metropolitan areas probably need it more so than like the more rural areas, yeah. right? That actually people yeah. have their own gardens and stuff like that. And whatnot. Yeah, I feel like there's more activism in the city in Santa Monica um, around sustainability and a sustainable gardens mm -hmm. and also food harvesting from backyard gardens. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's not really that much going on here. In yeah. the south, in Redondo, Hermosa, Manhattan, Torrance. Yeah, and do you think it's because you know there's just so much demand for food that people think, well, even if, I, if we do it, there's not a, we can't harvest enough to kind of feed everybody. You know, it's always like that the whole inclusiveness of a mm. we can't feed everybody, so why bother? So we might uh, as well. Yeah, totally. But um, there's this great quote by uh, David Holmgren. He's the founder of permaculture, he wrote the mm -hmm. coin of term. Mm -hmm. He says, you know, if everybody shifted their mindset from consumption to production, mm -hmm. we'd have a much more beautiful world. Yeah. I mean, so that's kind of how ma we're just grow something on your windowsill or just get out of that mindset of being a consumer. I grow a money tree over here. Hey. It's, it's it does grow on trees, right? Yeah. <laughs> and then I have that's that over there and I have that over there. Yeah. Cacti over here. I'm growing something. Yes. I can't eat it, but I'm growing something. No, but it's bringing <laughs> you beauty. It's changing the air in here. It's giving you more benefits than just being, you know, something that you eat. Yeah. So we talk true. about stacking functions, mm. finding, finding functions. See, so there's more than that to you than just nutrition. There's a Absolutely. bigger vision of stuff that you would love to see happen. And then the more successful you become, I have a sneaking suspicion, the more active you'll be in terms of being an instrument of that change, mm -hmm. I think. So that's really cool. It'd be interesting to see how, what happens in a couple more years. Have you back on the show and say, where are you now? 
<laughs> Where is she now? Where is she now? So, okay, cool. Do you, can you believe it? It's already been an hour. Oh my gosh, yeah, no. There's only yeah. a few minutes left. So what I want to do is I want to make sure that, you know, people who have had a chance to listen to this side of you and understand, get to know you a little bit better, that how they can connect with you. And, and maybe just give the specific thing that, you know, let me just kind of state what, what, if people, what, what they pay attention to in terms of challenges that would be a good idea for them to reach out to you, to connect with you? What are some of the challenges that people have mm -hmm. and that would say, okay, great, I should reach out and talk to Sarah? Well, we touched on one of them today, which is that distrust and disconnect mm -hmm. between you and food and you and your body, oh, yeah. or a distrust between parents and kids. Right. So if you're not really able to let your kid moderate how much they're eating, mm -hmm. and you feel like you want to control it, mm -hmm. that's not good. Okay. And um, you can help, I can help empower them. the children to absolutely right. empower the kids, empower the parents. Sometimes I don't even piece. need to talk to the children because it's a defeating thing. It's, right. It's all about the parents' energy going into the dinner yeah. table. Okay, cool. So yeah. the optimizing the 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 well, I think a lot of parents and a lot of people recognize that their nutrition is important. It is. But not many people know how to truly optimize their own unique Nutrition is so multifaceted, though. It's not just about the nutrients and the vitamins and mm -hmm. the fiber that's in the food. It's about everything. Right, right. It's and about as, your whole relationship and your attitude with food. Right. And as we said earlier today, that your relationship with food is going to directly impact also all the other relationships in your life, yes. including parents, kids, your marriage, your your money. Mm -hmm. There we go, the money lab. And we've already seen in our in our camp when we help people repair their relationship with their nutrition and self care that it does directly impact their money flow. So if any of those things are something that you have a question mark about or you feel like, uh, yeah, I could use a little support around that. Uh, I think you're pretty open to have you know first call conversations and everything like that, yeah, right? Absolutely. So how do they how do they you connect know, with you? How do they reach out to you? And um, connect with you? So my website. Sofulnutrition.com. Yes. S O U F is in Frank, L is in Larry, nutrition.com. Putting uh, that in the comments at the speaker. Thank you. <laughs> and then I'm on Instagram, Soulful Nutrition. It's uh, Soulful Nutrition. Yes. One Soulful word? Soulful Nutrition. Yes. All one word. Uh, you can email me, Sarah at Sofulnutrition.com. Um, and I'm around Redondo Beach. Yep. So you are I, local. I like being locally sourced here. <laughs> I like being in this community and being a part of it. Cool. So that's important to me too. Will you ever be worldwide? Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Once the kids go, I was like, out of here, <laughs> moving on to the world. Yeah. The world is my home. Yeah. <laughs> right. So very cool. Okay, great. Um, well, I think that's that's good. There is this. I have to listen to this again because there's a ton of information. I think we. We got our meandering actually took us to a yeah. lot of very cool thank points. Thank you. Yeah, that thank was... you for the conversation. And uh, there were a couple of things that came up for me too as takeaways. So. Yeah, that's very cool. So what is what? If so for someone who is like you know like you who's you know um, maybe pregnant and starting a new business, <laughs> <laughs> that unique combination. What would you say would be one gemstone of mm. uh, advice or suggestion because you navigated it? Mm -hmm. Okay, and I'm came feeling out really moved right now. I know. <laughs> oh, that's really amazing. I know it is pretty amazing. You should totally own it, yeah. right? Um, what What would you do to kind of like pay it forward? I mean, to help someone else who may be struggling with that come up because there's, God, no, yeah. there's a lot of people out there, married or not, yeah. um, you know, pregnant and starting a business. Yeah. You know, how How do you How do you What would you say would be one thing that you know they can take away from all this? Uh, I would say, oh man. I would say, my darling, you are a beautiful ray of light and you can do this and just stick with it. Give yourself a break. Mm -hmm. Don't be too hard on yourself. Mm, I think just that's a big key. Yeah. Love yourself through this and appreciate the process. Take time for yourself. Right. Take time and just trust that what you're doing is the right thing. If right. you know it deep down in your bones that mm -hmm. this is what you need to do, mm -hmm. do it. So it's congruency with your purpose and your message and what you want to do and the ability to just kind of ebb and flow gracefully with whatever comes up. Because a pattern from nature ebbing and flowing. Yeah. Yes. And I think I think I mean, because even though we look at the end products like, wow, you profited, you were you were pregnant, but you started a new business. 
and I'm sure there were times where it was it would really put tested your conviction. Yeah, or I could have chosen to be super stressed and super crazy and like working mm -hmm. too much because I was trying so hard to get it off the ground, but I didn't. I just relaxed. Mm -hmm. And I so think cool. that was really cool. Yeah. I have to appreciate that about myself. Oh, absolutely. And I think you did a great job. The fact that you were able to profit this being your first business ever yeah, and being the first year in business and being pregnant. Yeah. But I that's, do. and that's, and that's important, you know, for people to recognize that support is support. being able to willing to receive that support too. Mm -hmm. a lot of people have support. They don't receive it. Yeah. Right. So that's cool. Well, congratulations Thank again. You. That was so super cool. <laughs> and you know, again, if you guys, for those of you who just listened to this and you hear there's some great stuff, hopefully you're taking notes. But definitely, you know, share it. I mean, that's our show for this week. But if you found this episode to be valuable, know of someone else that could benefit from what we talked about today, totally share it because that's one of the best ways to pay it forward. Um, it doesn't have to be about money. It doesn't be about any other stuff. It's about just paying forward good, solid content from good people such as Sarah. It's so full. Now, review us on iTunes, Spreaker, or like the episode on Google Live. And did you know that we even have a Facebook group called The Money Lab? Are you in it? I did not. Oh, you need to join. I it. will join. Yeah, <laughs> join us there, and so, so we can. So because we go there and we dive even deeper. I put on the lab coat and I do the Facebook lives and we talk about Ooh. strategies and everything like that. So we go into like That's all great. these different ways to do it, and we'd love to have you in there to kind of share your story and whatnot. So, but. Um, that is pretty much it. That's a wrap. And um, take this week to apply the knowledge from today. Have an amazing week. And we'll catch you next week on the Money Lab Live podcast where we will have Tanya Pluckrose to talk about the art of selling to women specifically. This is Way and Sarah from the Six Figure Academy signing off. Bye. Okay. Wait bye to the YouTube crowd. Bye. Thanks for joining us. Thanks we'll see you guys next week. Stopping the broadcast.